So, hello and welcome to this week's podcast. This is Daniel, your usual host, uh, joined by Josh and uh, Greg, out here in Sandansky, a little town close to the uh, Greek border in southwestern Bulgaria. Uh, We're sitting in uh, Greg's uh, wonderful apartment, you know, his wonderful penthouse uh, here in Sandansky. So, Greg, why don't you introduce yourself? Who are you? Thank you very much. Um for the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm a f- All right. But you weren't always in uh, Sandansky, right? No. no. I, um, before Sandansky, I was living in Ber- um, sorry. Mm-hmm. Munich yeah. for three years. Right. Mm-hmm. And I moved uh, to Bulgaria, Bulgaria Sandansky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. And also, you've also lived all, all over the world, you know, China, America. A lot of places, absolutely. Lot, lots of places, which lots is of places. which is great. I mean, I, I like it because, you know, most of the people in my circle are global citizens as well. Mm-hmm. I don't like the term global citizen, it's a bit pretentious. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, excellent. So, what do you like about Bulgaria? What do you like most? Yeah, I like uh, people are very nice here, you know. Yeah. Uh, kind of authentic, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a really nice place to live uh, for a couple of years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, no, I like your point about the authenticity because you know Bulgarians are very direct, Absolutely. not like other places mm-hmm. where it's like you don't know what they're really thinking. It's like yeah, you know what you know what this person is, thinks about you. Exactly. <laughs> so there's no ambiguity, no nothing, which is refreshing, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. Would anyone like some tomatoes? You haven't even. Welcome to me to join in. I did. I said you were... Uh, okay. Shall we start again? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Josh, welcome. I think I said that you were already here, but you are here. We have heard you. Um, Josh, I love your egocentrism, but it's okay. So, yeah, I, I really like Sandusky. It's a nice little town. Very beautiful yeah. town, yeah. So, so, a very pleasant surprise. Very pleasant surprise. Um, sunniest place in Bulgaria, mm-hmm. which is great, which is suits the name, Sandak, sounds, sounds a bit like Sandansky, Sandansky. Is it sunnier than sunny beach? Is it sunnier than sunny beach? According to the internet, yes, but there are more women in bikinis on sunny beach. Well, because there is a beach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is the tastiest podcast we've had so far. <laughs> we've got rice, tomatoes, fresh toma- fresh Bulgarian tomatoes. We're in Bulgarian wine region. Yep. Is and are we drinking Bulgarian wine? It, but now we're drinking no, this French, is French wine. wine. Sorry. All right. <laughs> what do you mean, sorry? I mean, it, it goes with the elegance of this. Absolutely. Bless you, uh, Master Abe. Oh, is that is that bless you in Bulgarian? Nazdrave. It means to health. Ah. Okay. So when we clink our glasses, we're saying to your health, Daniel. Bra, nazdrovia. 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 The Baruski. Baruski. Почему не? Saúde, saúde. Я говорю немного по-русски. Немножко. So you've been learning Russian, right, Josh? With uh, with Greg, how's that going? Uh, Which for our dear listeners who... Uh, it means I don't know anything. All right. <laughs> no, I think he's really pro- progressing. Yeah. With his Russian. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're too humble, Josh. Too modest. Far too, yes, far too humble. Um, so, I mean, from what I've heard, you, you're able to... Look at you. That's great. Great. Thank you. You're able to cope very, very well in what little time you've had managed to practice and how few opportunities you've had to practice. I mean, how many people have you been able to speak uh, Russian to aside from Greg? There are other people. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but come on, Josh, the, the last two days we were talking Russian most of the time, no? Yes, but now you're tripping me out because if I'm going to start to engage in Russian in a podcast, mm-hmm. who knows which direction this is going to go. And I do know one direction it's going. It's going on the internet. Okay, let's speak French. 
<laughs> okay, you two can enjoy your dinner what? and have a good evening. Because of Jackie. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the internet speaks English apparently. Ya hachu ruski ezik. Ya hachu ruski djevichka. Uh, da. Ya hachu rus. Ya hachu. Ruski. Krasiva ya devichka. To pravda. No pachimu nie. That is pravda. Bravo. Bravo. Now, what does that mean? Because it all sounded like Greek to me. Josh, can you translate? Yes, when he said Pravda, he <laughs> said truth. And what was he saying truth to? He was saying truth to the statement that I like beautiful Russian women. <laughs> Who doesn't like beautiful Russian women? <laughs> not I. I don't think not, I don't think anybody dislikes beautiful Russian women. Aside from, I don't know, perhaps less attractive Russian women who are jealous. <laughs> On the topic of beautiful women, which are the most beautiful women in the world? Greg, I think that question goes to you. Can you repeat the question? Please? Which, where are the most beautiful women in the world? Where are they? In Paris, of course. In Paris? Really? Yeah, Le Valois Perret. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your final answer? No, I think a mm -hmm. beautiful girl yep. you can find in any country, but in mm -hmm. Slavic countries, you know, like Bulgaria, like Poland, like Russia. Right. You can find very beautiful girls. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, and Josh, where do you think they're located? I haven't seen enough of the world to judge mm -hmm. or to make up my mind on which country has the most beautiful women. Yeah. But I am very content with what I see here in this Slavic Eastern Orthodox country mm -hmm. and I'm just getting back from Paris. The women in Paris are very beautiful, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And they've definitely I got a, a certain class to them. Right. But I don't know if they're the most beautiful women in the world. No? I haven't been to Azerbaijan yet. <laughs> I hear there are beautiful Azeri women. Well, I was born there, you know, but I, huh? I left when I was three years old. Ah, so you, you couldn't form an opinion yet. <laughs> yeah, I just have some memories about uh, the yeah. Caspiasi, no? Oh, wow. But about the girls, no. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, where exactly were you born? I was born in Baku. In Baku, Azerbaijan, yeah. okay. <laughs> then, uh, three years old, uh, we moved uh, to Moscow. Yeah. I lived uh, one year in Moscow. Yeah. Moscow, Russia, not any other Moscow. Moscow, Russia. <laughs> And then we immigrate to Israel. Mm -hmm. to Moscow? No, but you haven't yet. Mm. I haven't been yet. No? I would like to go, very much. So. We'll go together, yes, yeah. okay? We'll yeah. enjoy it. Sure, why not? I hear that it's a very dirty city. Dirty city? Yeah, yeah. Well, you have, you have all kind of places, you know, mm -hmm. you have um, special places for very rich people, you right. know, very... Um, I can say uh, popular places, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Popular, you mean like working class, right? Yeah, I mean yeah. for everybody. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. But the, uh, I mean, I imagine the rich areas are, are emptying quite quickly, right? Thanks to no, thanks to our good friend Putin. Well, my good friend uh, Putin. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did a lot of good things, you know, for mm -hmm. for Russia, for um, yeah, for Russian people also. Oh yeah, but. Everybody has uh, his political opinion, so right? mm -hmm. mm. This is what you say also in English? Opinion? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, yeah, that's right. Each, each to their own. So what, I mean, what good has, has Putin done? Well, you have to see how was Russia before Putin, you know? Right. Um, totally under the hand of uh, Yeltsin and his uh, acolytes, right? Mm -hmm. Do you say also this in English? Acolytes? Acolytes. Um, Acolytes, yeah. Like his followers, right? Absolutely, yeah. His, his cabal. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I, I really don't know. I don't know if we have to speak about politics. Um, no? But um, yeah, we'll see, you know. All right. But Russia definitely is, um, did a big progress, progression mm -hmm. with Putin. And uh, of course, there is the good and bad part. Yeah. But uh, like everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. Can no, you no, say no. that Sarkozy did a very good job uh, in, in France? I don't think so. Can you say Hollande 
that stupid president that we have now, <laughs> did a great job, got great job for France. Is he doing a great so. job? Like, I don't know, what is he doing? Hollande? Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> I thought it was, who is he doing? Who is he doing? It seems to be the only thing that makes the headlines about Well, him. he became president by default, you know, so... Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, who was who was the competition at the time again? He beat Sarkozy. Yeah, Sarkozy, yeah. and um, obviously before. Uh, oh, we're forgetting the most important political player in France. Carla Bruni. No, 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 no. DSK. No. I mean, DSK? she's she's hot, but Dominique, Dominique Strauss-Kahn. Madame. Two swords. Marie, Royale. Madame Marie um, Le Pen. Oh, Mar oh Marine, Marine Le, Marine Le Pen. Yeah, she lost. Can we say it with a French accent, guys? Marine Le Pen. Absolutely. Marine Le Pen. Mm -hmm. Quelle Pen? What La fille de Jean-Marie Le Pen. Mm -hmm. Do you like her? I think she's a patriot, you know. I, I'm not ag agree with her about everything, you know, yeah. but she has a good points also. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, um, yeah, like, I'm not any person with her, but... So there's a lot of things, what you're saying, you know, it's, um, it's a good sense. Yeah? In, in what way? Well, for French people, you know, she's against that mondialism, mm -hmm. that uh, European globalization, yeah. globalization, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, that's uh, how you say globalization in Yeah, in French, French like you say like mondialism. Monde, monde is world, okay. Yeah. Le monde, yeah. it's Le world, monde. yeah. Okay. So, globalization, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. like we spoke yesterday about uh, that, Josh, you remember? And then yet? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, enti I'm entirely pro globalization. Yeah, I know that. Yes. <laughs> That's why this podcast is becoming interesting because we don't have the same point of view on, on absolutely, everything. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Disagreement is good absolutely. sometimes. You know, so long as it doesn't lead to violent conflict. Absolutely. I hope that we don't end up fighting no. each other by the absolutely. end. Never. Never. Good. <laughs> Only it will be a war of words, not a war of fists. Absolutely. <laughs> I think we have too much wine and too little vodka for this to descend into a fist fight. Oh yeah? Let's that's stay with the vodka. That sounds like a challenge. Let's stay with the vodka. No, let's stay with the wine. haven't started, or maybe someone started with the vodka. I'm on the beef. Shows how much of a global citizen I am. Beef? And Why? I tried uh, your beef, it's delicious. Spasiba, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. We were playing this little bit of a game of name that controversial European politician. That name. sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. But, so. but mm -hmm. I mean, it was interesting that those names came up. Right. Because at this very table, we have some polar opposite opinions about that cast of characters we discussed. Yes. And if we're talking about all three of us, mm -hmm. we've got all kinds of different That's right. On That's that. right. This is what's so what's so absolutely wonderful. Uh, For example, I'm, I am totally a royalist, like yes. we spoke yesterday. Yeah. We'll explain for the audience. Yeah, what, 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 is, what is a royalist? Who do you think is the, should be the real leader? Is it a, the bourbon pretender in, uh, in Brussels or...? No. One no. king and other god. Right. Power, you know. Right. That love its people. Okay. And uh, without uh, to have that kind of multitude, you know, of mm -hmm. politicians from right, right, left, center, right. etc., etc. So like great, an, um, let me take a crack at this. Absolute, yeah. So like an, yeah, an absolute monarchy, yes. Okay. When you say you don't like having the right and left fighting with each other, mm -hmm. is it that you say gridlock? is a bad thing. Or how do you say that in French? Political gridlock. Um, uh, I don't know the French term. But you, do, you, do you see what he means? Like, no. The fact that, the, the fact that you know, you have all of these parties fighting with one another yeah. and are unable to reach any kind of decision or any kind of consensus. Well, there was a fight and fight, you know, mm -hmm. there was the fight that you can see, right? Like a duel, you know? Yes. You have the judge, I don't know, how do you call that? The, the, the one is... Um, mm -hmm looking the duel between two people right. and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this is totally fair because it's everything it's direct right mm -hmm. and there is other kind of uh, manipulation that it's totally uh, that you cannot see mm. underground under the table right yeah right. so you're a royalist everywhere or um 
should so should everywhere. Well, I have know, royalists king? in a in, in a Bible sense, you know, of um, king David. royalists. Yeah, like yeah. King David, King Solomon. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I'm a big. Um, Fan, you know, of Alexander yes. the Great, you know, we are not so far away from Macedonia, right? Oh, no, well, that's right. Depending on who you ask, he yeah, might so, be in Macedonia right yeah. now. Some, okay. some might argue that he's from, he is actually, in fact, Bulgarian, not Macedonian. Yeah, or, or Greek. The, yeah, right. others would argue that he's Greek. Yeah. But the, these, are, these are the wonderful, you know, nuances of history, mm -hmm. which, uh, which are great. It's interesting how it seems as though we cannot go through a podcast without talking about Macedonia. No. <laughs> so the rest of the world is this little meaningless country, yeah. if they even know it exists. <laughs> it always talk about is Macedonia. Whereas, yeah, to us it's like Macedonia is the center of the world. Well, because Alexander the Great uh, did that such a... He was great. Well, depends, man, you know, depends, who you, right? depends who you ask. Mm -hmm. You know, Paluski is that Alexander Macedonski. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, you say in uh, Alexander of Macedon. Of yeah. Alexander de Macedon, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, taught by was it Aristotle? Who's his teacher? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Aristotle was his uh, master. Mm -hmm. uh, he teach him the philosophy. The, right. Mysticism. And, uh, so he the learned from the best. Absolutely. The best. Mm -hmm. And um, like like a lot of greats in history, he died very young. Very young. He died at uh, 32, I think. 32? 33. Wow. 32 or 33? Absolutely. I was going to say 33. 33? I'm not positive. Okay. Just like Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... If he died at 27, he'd be on the same the level as... Uh, like yeah, if he died at 27, he'd be on the same level as... Uh, you know, what's his face? Um, that would be quite a letdown. Why? As who? There have been several people who died at 27. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the judge, most you of said 33? Are, most of them are... I thought he yeah. died at 33. Mr. Shannon, I can check. Right? You can read from the both sides. It's kind of sign also. What, 33? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last day we were talking a lot about palindromes, right? Yeah, you like palindromes. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's because uh, mm -hmm. it's so flexible. You can read from both sides. You know, it's, um, it's this kind of magical thing inside. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Because most of the time, well, in every language, as far as I'm concerned, you either lead, read from left to right or right to left. This you can read from either way, either sense. Correct. Um, okay, so, all right, so you're a royalist. Yeah. Royalist only for France or everywhere else? So, for instance, should Bulgaria have a king? I think every country should... Uh, mm -hmm. Have a king. Yes? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Be, um, now, so what, why is that? Not because... Uh, I, I, I might be taking words out of your mouth, but mm -hmm. you said, you know, it's, it's due to, you know, um, you know, trying to follow in the, in the tradition of King David, King Solomon, uh, and things Alexander like that. Alexander so, the Great, Caesar. Yeah. So... Marc Aurel. By serving as God's representative on earth, it means that, okay, we're not really answering to the king, yeah. but we're answering to God, a higher authority, and he is, this king, or queen, mm -hmm. is supposed to, their, their decisions are supposed to be in line with what God Well, and they're the authority want. of the God. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, this can be, this can be quite challenging, because some might say, right? Because how, how do you know what... God would want, and if if that's the case, if you do not know what God wants, then why would there be a need for a king? Interesting. Interesting. Do, do you see what I'm getting yeah, at? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's everything. It's symbolic, mm -hmm. right? If uh, the king is uh, taking some authority yes. from. Uh, Maybe not directly from God, mm -hmm. but from people, the religious people, you know, that can lead him. Right. And um, it makes something like um, uh, that king is under the power of something, mm -hmm. right? It's I think it's much better than to be under the power of um, another kind of force. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, run, you going, know I mean. yeah, or going by the... The idea of moral relativism, where it's like, exactly. I'm right, you're right, he's right, exactly, and it's like, okay, what is right? Like nobody knows. It's like because it's it's according to everybody, it's and everyone's subjective. individual mm -hmm. opinion, subjective, yes, definitely, as opposed to you know answering to God. But then again, how does one derive God's will? Well, if a people has a 
mm -hmm. have, sorry, a religion, you yes. know, and um, they can be guided by uh, mm -hmm. the people who represent uh, that religion. Yeah. And I think it will be um, good for that people to have uh, somebody, you know, a king mm -hmm. under the power of um, a religion man right. who is connected with uh, mysticism, mm -hmm. religion, under the power of, of God. Right. Because, uh, yeah, that's my opinion. Okay. Right. And um, on Alexander of Macedon, yeah. I looked it up. He died at 32. Okay. So Sorry, here's right. a, here's an interesting tidbit for you. Uh -huh. He died in 323 oh, BC. BC. <laughs> so 323. Yeah. Is 323. Apparently. Oh, 322. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that yeah, means. Yeah, that's such a great know. master. You know that Aristotle. Yeah, yeah, in English, Aristotle in French. Aristotle. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, teach him uh, the, the, the philosophy, mm -hmm. you know, the, the esoterism, yeah. the yeah, everything, you know. It's I mean, you learned from the best of the best. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Literally the best of the best, because, mm -hmm. I mean, he was, it could be argued that Aristotle was probably one of the greatest minds who ever lived. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, in spite of, you know, technological limitations and everything else, you know, you could prove that what he said was wrong, but there's a lot of wisdom and depth behind it. Definitely. Which is still applicable today. Brought a lot of wisdom to that guy. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. With that Aristotle, he will be probably um, a big uh, megaloman. Yeah. You know, uh, 32 years old. I mean, he was like, what, like 26, 27 well, when he yeah. went to India. Yeah. Well, you say that he's a, he could have been a big megalomaniac, but yeah. he did name a lot of cities after himself. Absolutely. I mean, you find... Like Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria yeah. in, it, in uh, Italy. Uh, Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> And many other Alexandrias of the city of uh, Cleopatra yeah. and yeah mm -hmm. and uh, Marc Antoine, Mar Marc Anthony, yes, Marc Anthony, mm -hmm. the, the, aff the affair that they had together, yeah. Marc Anthony and mm -hmm. Cleopatra in Alexandria. Right, okay. Alexandria. Yeah. I was just in Versailles. Yeah. What do you think of Louis the Fourteenth? Well, he was a great king. You know, uh, he did a lot of great things in France. You know. Very megalomaniac, right? He was a king, uh, a lot of prestige. Yeah. Yeah, and after him, you know, uh, you had kind of decadence um, mm -hmm. in the French history, you know. Which? The Louis XV, yeah. the XVI, the guillotine, mm -hmm. him. the French Revolution start. Yeah. Then after the Revolu French Revolution, Napoleon uh, mm -hmm. take the power. It, it's not even monarchy, but he created kind of a... Well, it's one of the first dictatorships. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and um, a wet one. And, and actually, this reminds me of a conversation that I had with a German friend of mine mm -hmm. a long, long time ago. You know, we were, we were arguing about how evil Hitler was because, you know, he, he took over the whole of Europe. And, of course, there is no way that you can compare Napoleon to Hitler. Absolutely not. No way. Yeah. But he... but. His point was very interesting, because, you know, Hitler, what did he do? He tried to take over Europe. Yeah. What did Napoleon try to do? The same thing. Exactly the Absolutely. same thing. So, um, of course, one of them tried to, was motivated by very evil motives, you know, trying to kill people, whereas, what, actually, what was Napoleon motivated by? Besides ego, obviously. Well, to, to say two words about uh, Napoleon, for me, it was... Uh, <laughs> the war, you know, between uh, England and France, yeah. right? And uh, that was the main uh, thing. And um, yeah, the ambition of Napoleon was to create, um, mm -hmm. while well, he put all his brother and sister, you know, like uh, the kings um, yeah. of Italy, of a different region, yeah, of, of Spain, uh, Spain uh, Belgium, mm -hmm. Holland, etc., etc. Yes. Yeah, it was, he was a very megalomaniac um, mm -hmm. emperor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, he really wanted to continue, you know, what uh, Caesar, uh, where Caesar stopped, mm -hmm. right? Well, you, you know, that's that's why he he built the Arc de Triomphe, right? This was harking back. It was going back to the Roman Empire. He mm -hmm. was trying to emulate what they did. Absolutely, right? Yeah, and the Concord mm -hmm. was uh, related to Egypt when he went to Egypt. The Concord? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what do you mean? By the you Concord? mean the obelisk? The obelisk. Yeah. It's coming from Egypt, right? 
So, um, yeah. Yeah, I believe it was. Oh, the Place de la Concorde. Absolutely. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I was, I was not talking about the plane. <laughs> not the plane, but you know, con Concorde, like yeah, Concorde, yeah, absolutely, it's like absolutely. an agreement absolutely. of sorts. Okay, yeah. the, the Place de la Concorde. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, that's right, because you know, he went to Egypt. Why would he go to Egypt? Probably to emulate something, right? To continue yeah. the. Where, uh, where Caesar and Alexander mm -hmm. could not continue, understand? He wanted right. to, to go further. Okay. That, oh, that's that was the main plan. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Alexandria was built uh, by Alexander the Great. Yes. Caesar went there, mm -hmm. fell in love with uh, Cleopatra. And then when Caesar, mm -hmm. when they killed Caesar, when Brutus killed Caesar, mm -hmm. you had Marc Antony yes. that fell in love with uh, Cleopatra. Yes. And they want, they really wanted to continue the work of uh, mm -hmm. Caesar. And um, what's well, the story of Alexander the Great? Alexander the Great, yeah. yeah. And, but what, what's really interesting about Cleopatra mm -hmm. is that she was, she was basically the last ruler of um, ancient Egypt. Because but after she, her. But she was an Egypt, Egyptian. She blood. wasn't? No, she was Greek. Ah, oh, Macedonians claim that she's Macedonian. No, that <laughs> was 100% Greek. 100% Greek. Absolutely. Oh, no wow. blood, no, no Egyptian blood. Yeah? Uh -huh. That would explain the nose. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, your royal list, we've gone through this a bit. Josh, what are your political views? Where do you stand on the spectrum? If at all, you might be off the spectrum. I was just at these locations that we're discussing. Cairo? In, no, I would very <laughs> much like to go to Egypt, but no, I was in Paris. And Versailles, mm -hmm. to me, is a symbol of tyranny. Tyranny? I have a much different view. I don't want a monarch. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that there were ideals expressed leading up to the French Revolution that could make for the foundation of a very efficient, prosperous, and peaceful society. But I don't believe that what happened during the French Revolution is how you should go about that. And it's clear to me that most revolutions end by replacing one form of tyranny with another. That's right. I In mean, short, I'm a libertarian, uh -huh. and I would like to see the power to be held in the hands of the individual, right. not in the king, and not in a strong central government. Mm -hmm. Now that, that reminds me of a uh, famous quote, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. Is, 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 that, is, that, is that the quote, exact quote? I don't know that quote. quote okay, this, basically, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. So mm -hmm. more th the more things change, mm -hmm. the more they remain the same. The more they remain the same. So, so, you know, if you take the word revolution, what is a revolution in terms of physics? It's a circle. Going around in a circle. So when, when you have a revolution, what happens? I ask for a beetroot. Okay, you have some beetroot. Merci. But when you but when you have a revolution, what it, what happens when you have a revolution? Well, the American Revolution was a bit of an exception, but most revolutions are one big circle. Yeah, it's it's and especially in France, the French Revolution, the aristocracy, as far as I'm concerned, perhaps you can correct me on this, remained intact. And in a revolution, you have a rêve. Dream. Oh, dream, yes. <laughs> rêve is dream in French. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And um, so, yeah, this is why, this is why me personally, I'm not too supportive of various, all, all, all yeah, of these political you... movements, because it's like, okay, you're trying to work for something, but what are you, what are you doing? You're replacing one boss with another boss. And Daniel, if you remove the R mm -hmm. of revolution, what you have? Evolution. Evolution. Yeah. But it is an evolution. It's a revolution, so you're going, what is a revolution? When you win a circle, you're going back to the same point. Everything is about the circle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but if, it's you, mm -hmm. if you don't take interest in politics, right. politics will take interest in you. Really? If you don't take interest in the king, mm -hmm. the king will take interest in you. Now, Greg, 
I would guess, believes that certain kings, not all, but certain, know best. I mean, if, if they're going to tax the population, they're going to confiscate those resources and put them to good or proper use. I mm -hmm. believe that's that's what you argue. That's if like you know, you you you're following the ways of God, yeah, right? You can have a good king, you yeah. know, without any tyranny, uh -huh. uh, and... Uh, yeah, it can be well, good for the people. Uh, yeah. Regardless, the, the king will be making decisions on your behalf. Yes. Yeah. Whether they're the right decisions, whether you agree with them, or yeah. whether they're the wrong decisions and you disagree with them. And what about but, the democracy? But you it's can the same thing Absolutely. in the democracy. Mm -hmm. The majority, or in some cases the minority, mm -hmm. a minority, will be making decisions on your behalf. Yes. I think it's a Montesquieu, Montesquieu said, uh -huh. la democracy, c'est les poux. Le lion. Can you translate that, Josh? So, democracy, yeah, democracy is fleas devouring or consuming the lion. Absolutely. So, what exactly does this mean? Well, lion, it's a democracy, you know, it means. Um, well, lion is the country. Uh, exactly. I mean, the country, yeah, yeah. the country. Include uh, the democracy, so mm -hmm. this kind of uh, political uh, regime. Regime, yeah. 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 And um, les poux mm -hmm. in English. The fleas. The fleas, yeah. Yeah. What is it? It's the invisible power. No, that's right. It's very small. Absolutely. It's very. It's irritating. Mm -hmm. But fleas are very small. You can't find them. You know, with the naked eye, you need them. Uh, the revolution are, are never made by the majority, right? By the mass, never. It's always made by the minority. Yeah. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's right, it, but it's a very strong minority. Well, it's the largest minority. En français, on appelle ça les minorités agissantes. Okay, the active minority. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can take the example, you know, I hate to bring this up, but, you know, with Adolf Hitler, yeah. you know, he didn't come to power with the majority government, but he used his power, he used his leverage to, you know, eliminate the, well, do exactly what he did, I mean. So, you know, you can look up the history of the Nazi regime, we won't talk about it. Yeah, that he was too ambitious, you know, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he totally changed his... Uh, became crazy. You know? Yeah. Oh, he would, right? <laughs> pure, megaloma pure megalomania. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so Josh, in a nutshell, what is your view? Very delicious beetroot. <laughs> Compliments on the beetroot. Thank you very much. But in terms of politics, rather than, <laughs> <laughs> rather than um, I believe that mm -hmm. people know themselves best. Yep. They ought to make decisions for themselves, choose mm -hmm. how to live their own lives. They know best how to live their own lives. Yeah. Not a king, not a central government. That is my belief. But Josh, that creating kind of individualism, you know, people need the. Uh, yeah, and uh, moral relativism you need a as leader, well. You know, yeah. the, the, the people need to be led by someone. People want to be led. Absolutely. I don't know whether they need to be led, but they want to I be led. I think they need. They need? Absolutely. Okay. Because you can take 10 people in one room, and mm -hmm. they will all have a different kind of... Um, opinion. Opinion, opinion yes. yes. Opinion mm -hmm. about uh, where the country should go. Right. Huh? Right, well, so, so in this case, you would need somebody, but this leader, he's not necessarily going to, I mean, I'm going to quote Jamie Dimon here, but a good leader is not necessarily the person who makes the best decision, but the person who ensures that the best decision is made. So he's going to look at all of the arguments and then choose the best one of those. But Daniel, you know, it's like a football team, you know, without right. captain, right? Yep. Or uh, one, one navire, mm -hmm. one boat, yeah. one ship without captain. Right. It doesn't make sense. You need kind of a governor, you need kind of a direction. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the leader, right. we need it. Do you need a leader? I think that Josh disagrees. I believe that Adam Smith was onto something when he brought up this concept mm -hmm. of the invisible hand. Ah. I do believe that in serving your own interests you are actually going to serve interests of others because it is within your interest in a free market system to provide other people mm -hmm. with goods and services yeah. that they demand 
because then you get in return mm -hmm. something that you demand. No, that, that's one of the amazing things about capitalism, actually, because each under capitalism, although you know the each exchange might not be optimal, each exchange done when people buy a certain product, sell a certain product, uh, buy a service, sell a service, whatever, it is done with mutual consent, hundred percent mutual consent. Now it might be un it might be you know grudging consent. It's like okay, you know I'd rather not buy this, but I have to. Um, that's one of the amazing things. Each and every transaction, mutual consent. When buyer and seller compromise, they are ha they each are fulfilling their interests. Mm -hmm. When left and right compromise in the government, right. they may be fulfilling their interests, mm -hmm. but their decisions affect everyone yeah. in the society, and you can be sure that that compromise does not satisfy mm -hmm. everyone in the society. I mean, that's because their interest is the same power. Interesting point right? of view. Yeah. But it might not be in society's interest for these people to same power. Correct? Of course. Yeah. Okay, so from what so I got, Daniel. Yes. What is your political? What is my political? Yeah, we're really interested, <laughs> Daniel. We want to know. Well, we've summarized. Okay, royalist, yeah. uh -huh. anarchist, basically, no government. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting words in my mouth. I think Daniel, you are totally right. You know, hey. Judge, this is from, from what I gather. From what I gather, that's just the case because yeah, no lead, no country, no government, it's no anarchy. nothing. It's is anarchy, anarchy, right? Absolutely, absolutely. No, I believe oh, really? in self governments governance. I believe what? that if you like the government as a service provider, mm -hmm. if you like the services that the government is providing, then you can pay for whatever that is. You but can so write them a check. You can yeah. send however much money you want to the government and let them do with it as they wish. Okay. But I mean, what are the limits of self government? For, for instance, could you have a global government and be like, okay, I will choose whether to pay taxes or not to this global government? Yes, you could. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, the UN right now. Mm -hmm. So essentially... The, the United Nations is a global government. Right. And to some extent, to some extent, yes, we are taxed because money from our existing governments mm -hmm. goes to the United Nations. Right. But there is no direct tax in which the United Nations forces me to write them a check every year. Okay. But if you support what the United Nations is doing, mm -hmm. then in a, free, in a free society you're welcome to give them however much money and yeah. property that is you desire. And, but this is not Minarchism, so it's not the smallest possible government, because so, you could have a situation where everybody was like, would, this is, of course, reducing it to the absurd, where they were like, okay, everybody could decide that they want to pay, they want to give 100% of their income to the government. And that would be acceptable, so long as they each choose to do so and have the choice, the option to do so. My belief is that... I mean, this is very extreme. Example. My belief is that my money mm -hmm. is my property, right. my body is my property. Okay. It should be my choice what right. to do with it. Your money is your property, mm -hmm. your body is your property. It should be your choice okay. what to do with it. So in this case, the size of the government is not... It depends on how much the people's... Each individual decides to give to this government. I believe people are best suited governing themselves. Mm -hmm. That's my belief. Yeah. Now, if you believe, or like what Greg is saying, mm -hmm. that you are not capable of governing yourself, and yeah. you need a king, or a politician, mm -hmm. or a president, or a political party in order to lead you, then you can give to that entity <coughs> however much that it is you desire. All right. But it's to have a king, mm -hmm. okay, versus yes. to have a government supranational like we have now, you yeah. know, the European Union, yeah. that absolutely doesn't care about the interest of France, mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's, I think a country should be led by a, a representative of uh, his, uh, his country. Right. A countryman, right? Right, right. That's my opinion. But that, I mean, I'm not, uh, that runs counter to, from what I understood anyway, mm -hmm. earlier, is that a government or a king should not answer to the people but only to God. So, for instance, if every, for the sake of argument, let's say that <coughs> that God says, "Okay, murder is wrong. We should not murder." So the king says, "Murder is wrong. It's Nobody okay. should murder." But in the society, everyone says, "Murder is okay." This society is wrong. Definitely. <coughs> okay. I think the king should be. Uh, <coughs> Under the authority of um, kind of a spiritual man, because mm -hmm. otherwise you, you you are going to have a country which is totally materialist, okay? Right. Progressist mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, going straight to the chaos. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we we need to to to, to stay humble, right? And uh, to be un under the the authority of somebody uh, mm -hmm. higher than uh, a king. The king should be on, only the representative of right. the people. So in that case. People should not have the the people should not have any decision making power whatsoever. Well, the king should rep represent uh, that, that, that people. Yeah. So yeah. the king he will talk to God or whatever. I don't know what. And he'll be like, okay, this is this is what you know. It was like the time of the Templar, right? Uh, uh, the Templars. Yeah, the Templars. Yeah, you had the twelve, right? The chevalier. Yeah. Temp the twelve uh, knights. Yeah, knights. knights. Yeah. And they were uh, they were. Um, so this is like uh, the late Middle Ages, kind of right? Spiritual man, you know mm -hmm. that you know the Templars they had a lot of uh, spirituality, right? Also, you right. know what 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 you call um, how do you call that? Um, um, you know when they went to, to Jerusalem because uh, mm -hmm. the purpose to take the Jerusalem from from the Muslims right. at that time, right? right. The Crusades. So, the Crusades. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, so, exactly. I was looking searching for this word. So uh, yeah, that was the main purpose. Mm -hmm. um, I believe uh, a government, uh, uh, a leader without any spirituality, it's a pure materialism right. and it goes nowhere. Right. That's my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what, this is fantastic because we all, three of us, I haven't given my political opinion yet, mm -hmm. but we have very contrasting opinions. Definitely. Very contrasting, but none of which can apply to the majority of the people outside, right? <laughs> well, that's why we are passing the, the holidays together, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, right. Daniel, we are very interesting to know your opinion about that. All right, so what is my view? Yeah. What is my view? Uh, personally, I, I, I find the idea of the nation state totally absurd. I find it to be beyond reason. Why is this? Um, the, the main reason is the way that the economy works today, mm -hmm. global economy works today. You know, everybody listens to the same music, everybody watches the same films, everybody eats the same food. You know, you have McDonald's almost everywhere. The world is becoming totally homogeneous. So oh, homogeneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but you know, and companies, you know, they have one uh, one element of their production facilities in one place, another in another place. So it's like, why even have, why have borders, why have, why even have national identity? You can have regional identity, it's like, okay, in this part of the world, you can, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that, acceptable, yes. But to be like, okay, you know, because um, I was born here, I have more of a right to live here. That is stupid. Daniel, can I that is uh, idiocy interrupt you uh, once on again? The highest level, in my view. Please interrupt. Me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was one very beautiful uh, African mm -hmm. proverb right. huh, saying, you know, that the baobab, I'm mm -hmm. going to say in French because I really don't the know. The baobab English. tree. Yeah. yeah. The baobab tree, you know, mm -hmm. it's very powerful tree. Right. If you cut its roots, if you cut the racines, it dies tout de suite. It's dying right away. It's At all about the root. Right. The roots. Right. So people, a country without roots, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Le machin, like what was, was saying uh, the goal. Le machin? Le machin, the thing. Okay. About the UN. All right. <laughs> uh, sorry, about the NATO. 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 He called yeah. it the thing. He didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't the thing. Absolutely, call it yes. by his name. Okay. Absolutely. Um, 
the now I, I would I would respectfully 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 disagree um, why the right hmm? to disagree, disagree. exactly well, absolutely yeah. this is what's so beautiful about uh, about Capitalism, it arouses for free exchange of and ideas. Yeah, did you watch the Great Bazaar Part 1? No. You know, he had, a, <laughs> he had a reunion, you know, between all the the Godfather, I mean, the Godfather of every city in America, you know, mm -hmm. and the Met, and yes. uh, Marlon Brando said, was talking, you know, and um, and one of the Mafia guys said, mm -hmm. after all, we are not communists. <laughs> <laughs> About sharing, you know, all the, the power between them. Oh, not yeah. sharing power, not, not sharing, sharing ideas. Yes. <laughs> Because there is no power to share. It's always belonging to the individuals. Strongest. But what makes them strong? The power. Yeah. Yes. Where does the power come from? Support from others. From? Other pe under in other individuals. Well, you are a leader and you are um, creating your own group, mm -hmm. organization. Yeah. It can be criminal, politic. Yeah. Ideologic, uh -huh. and yeah, like that you can gain power. Okay. Josh, don't you think so? I believe it can be both criminal and political. It's not antinomic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes they are synonymous. It's definitely, it's definitely not antinomic, you know. It's no. working together very well yeah. since a uh, thousand years, you know. Mm. As, uh, for instance, you know, I was, in, uh, I was in Las Vegas a few years ago. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I was, I was speaking to this woman, she's from Las Vegas, she grew up there, and she was like, you know what, like, um, a long time ago, you know, the, the, it was run by the, ma the city was run by the Mafia, today it's run by companies, big companies, like two or three companies run Las Vegas. And it's like, what, the, what is the difference, right? <laughs> it reminds me, you know, the movie Casino from Scorsese, mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Yeah, you, b before, you know, the, 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 the big corporation, um, Took uh, Las Vegas, right? Yeah. The Flamingo Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, the all, all all the big casinos. Yeah. Yeah. So it was uh, lead and ruled by by, by the mafia. Mm -hmm. So now the corporation took over. Yeah, can, but what what is the difference, right? That's such a big difference. I mean, what, what do you what do you what do you visualize when you imagine mafiosos? It's people in suits. Who go around and sit in meetings all day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what does a businessman do? He's in a suit and he sits around in meetings all day. Our politicians. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is things you can see and there is things you cannot see, right? Exactly. So they're meeting, they're everything, you know, mm -hmm. it's... Uh... So yeah, I mean... So yeah, that's the thing, it's like... Am I an anarchist? No. Do I believe in the nation state? No. So as a result, what is the logical conclusion? Because, you know, if you're a businessman and you want to, you know, you want to sell your, you want to, I don't know, ship products from Mongolia to Burundi, for example. You know, you, you, Mongolia and Burundi, they're small minor countries, so you'd probably have to go from Mongolia to China, and then China to South Africa, and then South Africa to Burundi, put simply. Well, so you're dealing pure, with four different tax regimes. Yeah, that's a pure liberalism, right? It's all about uh, about that. Uh, what about the people that mm -hmm. are not businessmen? <coughs> Let's say that I want to take a vacation somewhere. Yeah. Anywhere in the world. I want to go to, I don't know, Cuba. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm American, I want to go to Cuba. Uh, two, a few years ago. Let's say that I was, an, I was an American in, like, I don't know, 2010, before they lifted the embargo, who wanted to go to Cuba. I would not have been able to. In this situation, I would have been able to, and Cubans would have been able to go to America, and then, you know, so you're allowing for free exchange. So well, if you're, maybe, you're a capitalist, if you want capitalists, you cannot accept national borders, because they are impediments to capitalism. And capitalism involves not only the free movement of capital, but free, mo free movement of ideas, of people, because people are human capital. Daniel, it's a really interesting point of, point mm -hmm. of view, but for me, a country yeah. is like one house, okay? Okay. Could you leave uh, your apartment mm -hmm. totally door open and to anyone can come inside and uh, shoot your <coughs> apartment? I don't think so, right? Yeah, but that's so my the apartment. The line, it's the door of the country. Yeah. Nothing else. 
You need to have some control. Why? Okay, well, if... Well, otherwise, you, you, you will have some stealers, you will have some Thieves? manipulators. Ah, I would strongly disagree. You know, you look Expect. at the most successful places in the world. Like? Aside from Japan, because Japan's an, ex an exception. Yes. You know, London, more than half of the population look, in London are Japan is a country UK. without... A, Japan is yeah. a country, you know, totally is isolated. Yeah, because it's that's, why, that's why it's being discussed. It's discount. one island, yeah, and there is almost no immigration in yeah. Japan. Yeah. But they're Absolutely not. But they're very wealthy, so that's well, why I'm discounting yeah. it. Absolutely. So you look at Singapore, <coughs> London, Toronto, Los Angeles. Okay, Singapore, London, mm -hmm. Japan, they are all islands. Australia, it's one island. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. Toronto. Yes. New York. These yes. are not islands. You're no, naming all America. locations within countries or that are countries mm -hmm. that at a certain point in their history embraced capitalism. Yeah, but what, 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 but what, what uh, defines these? these places are very multicultural, right? Whereas you take, whereas you look at other, you look at mono-ethnic places, very mono-ethnic places, which have closed themselves off to the rest of the world. Like Japan. And they're not doing very well. Japan is an exception. But Japan is an exception in a lot of ways. Absolutely. So I am discounting it. <laughs> but you'd probably argue that, okay, leftists, they say that, you know, they only pick and choose <laughs> their examples. Well, I, I really don't believe, you know, that uh, mm. a country with a borderline can work and can survive. Or, yeah? Yeah, I don't, really don't believe so. Well, like I said, you know, it's, uh, it's like you open the door of mm -hmm. your apartment, you know, and yeah. any uh, stealer can take anything from your house, you know, and... Oh, you, you, know, need, you need rule of law. You need some jurisdiction. You need you rule need of law, courts. you need minimum government. Yeah. But to prevent one person from going from one place to another, this is stupid. I mean, did you choose to be born in Azerbaijan? Did you choose to be born in California? Did I choose to be born in the UK? No. No. We did not. We had no choice in this. And now we find ourselves in Bulgaria. Would this have been possible if, like, everywhere had closed borders? Would we have been able to Bulgaria make Bulgaria has closed borders. <laughs> Daniel, it's very interesting what you're saying, but if you take the, the case of France, for example, okay? Right. So there is a huge immigration, mm -hmm. you know, from North Africa, right? right. And it's creating a lot of problems in mm -hmm. France, right? People, the Arabic, uh, Arabic people, you know, from Maghreb, mm -hmm. um, very nice people, you know, the, it's nothing to do about that, but it's, you know, there is one writer, his name is Camus, mm -hmm. nothing to do with the, the writer Camus. Not Albert Camus. No, not Albert Camus. No. I forgot his first name. Okay, anyway, Camus. S Steve. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one, you know. <laughs> Some small Steve American Camus. Camus, like, uh, <laughs> and French. Yeah, and Camus wrote a mm -hmm. book, very interesting book, you know. The name of the book, it's, can you translate, uh, okay. Daniel? Le Grand Remplacement. The, uh, the Great or, Replacement. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So one way, you, you know, you, what you are doing, it's, uh, you are totally killing a, a people mm -hmm. that have a roots in that country for millennia. Right. You say this in English, millennia? Millennia. Millennia, yeah, sorry. Right. And, um, and to replace mm -hmm. by other people, you know, and I don't think this is right for the, for the, for the local people. Because, now, what, what, uh, do you think, being, what do you think the Roman Empire did? And well, most of Western civilization it's, is trying to emulate what the Roman Empire it's, it's did. It's very interesting what you're saying, yeah. uh, Daniel, very interesting, because uh -huh. the, the, the Roman Empire, right. at my sense, died from, died from two things. Mm -hmm. First, the huge immigration that they had, right. huge one, you know, from India, from uh, Iran, from uh, oh, yeah? so many different places, yeah, absolutely. And from the decadence of the politics, you mm -hmm. know, that uh, liberalism, but in the sense of the sexuality, of course, you know. Yeah. All those orgy, all those... Um, it's excess. Yeah, it's... Which preceded, the French Ooh, yeah, which preceded the French Revolution, because you see, when did France, when was France, it's greatest, we the 14th. Yeah. Two generations later, it's gone. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and you can you can look at countless examples like. I know. Well, in in both of those cases, there was major overextension 
and debt having largely to do with warfare. Mm -hmm. Welfare, which slowed down the productivity. And the, it, that cycle just repeats itself. Countries that, that get fat and happy mm -hmm. and stop producing yep. and instead borrow end up crumbling. Mm -hmm. And you see it over and over again throughout history. Histoire se répète et l'histoire est un éternel recommencement. That's right. That's right. And it's why, um, you know, you often see financial crises followed by, well, pre preceded by, you know, peaks. You know, for instance, the, uh, uh, the Empire State Building mm -hmm. was finished just before the uh, Great Depression. And uh, other great buildings which were finished just before, you know, the collapse of whatever country or regime they're associated with. Daniel, I insist mm -hmm. that you're having a, a French uh, wine. One French glass wine. of wine. One glass of wine. I'm but sorry. That would be very nationalistic. It would be amazingly well. I don't amazingly think we nice. should have French wine. Why? I have three bottles that are all French. It's not nationalistic. I, it would be nationalistic to have Bulgarian wine. I. I think it's good to be a little bit uh, patriotic. I think we should, have, we should have wine of the world. Okay, so yes. from where? We shouldn't have on the label... Mexican wine. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but two weeks ago I had uh, Bulgarian wine in my place, you know, from... Uh, what's the city next to... But uh, it should just say Planet Earth Me Melnik, on the label. You know, really good wine from Melnik. Melnik? You know? Yeah. I hear they have fantastic wine. Absolutely. And it's close by, I should go. Mm -hmm. It's a Bordeaux. It's Jean Redon. Appellation mm -hmm. d'origine. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay. <laughs> That's the only thing I know about wine. If it's like appellation d'origine protégée, I mean, how do you translate that? Contrôlé. Contrôlé. Yeah. How, do you, how does one translate that? It's like... Well, it's a, yeah, it's a copyright, you know, yeah. in the region. Yeah. So you know it's legit. Absolutely. Basically. Mm -hmm. Not like those fake wines you find. It's a very good wine. <laughs> anyway, cheers, Santé, everyone. Santé, chers amis. Cheers. Oui, oui, oui. Oui, oui, oui. No, no, no. Josh, can you say it in Russian? Nazdarovia. Nazdarovia. Josh, can you say in English? Nazdarovia. Can you say in English? My name is Daniel. Uh, Daniel, can you say in English? Cheers. Cheers. Daniel, on très cher ami. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's good. totally different. Good. Mm. Dry? These are two different wines, actually. I, I like this one. This one is better, yeah. Yeah, I Absolutely. agree. That's good. In vino veritas. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> what is this? How much do you pay for it? In Bulgaria, not very much. No. I usually pay something like eight, nine uh, leva for, yeah. for the battle. You know, I think this one is a little, little bit cheaper. Okay. Which is yeah. four, four fifty euro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, half. I, I remember when I was yeah. living in uh, Chicago. You know. You, you had one very good Italian wine, you mm -hmm. know, and I was paying something like four dollar fifty. Yeah, for the better. That's quite a steal. Speaking of Chicago, yeah, the Chicago School of Economics might have been a different one, but they ran a they ran a test uh, because you know some members of this club, I think it was like some kind of fancy wine club, mm -hmm. no economics club, but then it involved fancy wine, and they weren't happy with the fees, and the fees were justified by the cost of the wine, and so these guys. You know, they weren't exactly, they're economists, so they like to make cause arguments. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't entirely convinced by, by this argument that you needed expensive wine. So, in order to prove this point, what do they do? Um, they, they got three glasses and two types of wine, right? Uh, one very cheap wine and one, you know, average mm -hmm. wine. And so in the first glass, they poured the cheap wine and they made labeled it as cheap. Yeah. Then they got the average wine, labeled it as average. And then they poured the cheap wine in the third glass and labeled it as expensive. And what were the results? They found that people who drank from the... All of the, all of the members of this club, they almost the universal, they liked the expensive one. Oh, really? And they said that the cheap <laughs> one was disgusting. Yeah. Even though they were exactly the same wine. So my question is... Is this whole wine business a bunch of crap? <laughs> well, I really don't know, you know, because... Because um, you have good I, ones, you have bad wines, yeah, but absolutely. the price, is the price important? Yeah, but 
because it's a French wine, you know, it's coming from my country, mm -hmm. and I'm a little bit used to, you know, it's uh, bring me kind of um, nationalism, the yeah. world the judge we absolutely not like. But yeah, neither do I, um, neither do I, I find it yeah, it's silly. Yeah, <laughs> but I really love uh, yeah. Bulgarian wine, uh -huh. wine from Italian wine, etc, etc, but sometimes I want chili to find... Chili wine is good. Chili wine is very good. Oh. Yeah. yeah, You know, but chili wine, most of the chili wine mm -hmm. are made by French people in, in South America. Oh, France. yeah, that's why, because, you know, one of their presents yeah. was Pinochet. And then Pinochet. before that was uh, that woman, I've forgotten her name, but mm -hmm. that was another French name. But, but yeah. I don't think, you know, I don't think uh, uh, nostalgia, because it, it's your country, you mm -hmm. want something that belongs to, to your country. Right. It's kind of a pejorative uh, nationalism. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind of, it's something to do with art, you know. Right. Your art uh, want that you remember something from your country. Yeah, so I don't think it's something to do with nationalism no? or um, patriotism. No, it's... Uh, okay. It's but from, from the, the land or the region that you grew up in, I mean, yeah. you, you find it it's a lot... It's you know? know? But you find it a lot within countries. You could have somebody from Brittany, for, using the France example, mm -hmm. moving to Paris, and they'll be sitting around missing Breton food. Mm -hmm. As opposed, you know, that's... that's you know, especially French. for the expat people, you know, yeah. I'm... Um, I am expat now for 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. I travel in so many different places, you know, right. so of course I miss uh, some products, some mm -hmm. movies, from uh, some books, you know, from, from France. Yes. That's, for me, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like you, Joshua, right? Sometimes you, you miss a lot of things from, uh, from California, from uh, USA. Very rarely. But I did live in wine country for the past six years, mm -hmm. or leading up to this past year. And I don't think Chicago is wine country. <laughs> a lot of people who are connoisseurs of wine are based in don't, Chicago. No? don't view wine in terms of is it two dollars or twenty dollars, but in terms of is it a Bordeaux? Oh. Is it a Pinot Grigio? Right. Is it a Merlot? Is it a Cabernet? What is my taste? Mm. People who are connoisseurs have tastes and they know their taste. Yeah. So people who don't know their taste mm -hmm. are likely to <clears throat> just accept whatever label is thrown on the bottle. But the vast majority of us, we do, when we go to the supermarket, if we don't know anything about wine, we will go for the most, for one of the more expensive ones. We won't go for the cheapest wine, right? If Absolutely. you don't know any better, you do what you're told. Yeah. Well, you don't want to get uh, to be disappointed, right? So yeah. you prefer to pay the price. I don't know. I'd rather pay nothing. That way you're guaranteed not to be disappointed because you, <laughs> you're going to assume it's terrible. And then it could be good. If you're paying a lot of money, you're paying through the nose, then you're expecting it to be good. And if it's terrible, then you will be disappointed. Absolutely. Right or wrong? Wrong. Right? I'm totally white, sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the effect of the wine. Yeah, the French wine. Mm -hmm. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Let's drop it. Let's drop it. Let's drop it. Santé. Santé. La chaim. Chaim. Saoudje. Um, Prost. Prost. <laughs> you know, the most beautiful language in the world, German. Can you explain why? Why? I was being I said, can you explain why? Why? Can you explain the sarcasm? Let's just Question. Mm -hmm. Because I know nothing about Russian. But I, I mean, does it have a lot of influence from Latin? Oh, definitely. Yeah? Absolutely. I mean, aside from, you know, the uh, declinaison, the Latin, cases. Greek, you know, German language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Indo-European uh, languages. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. Okay. I, I was under the impression that it was its own thing. Well, through Slav Slavic influences, which were their own things, totally separate from Latin, Greek, German, whatever. It's absolutely not separate. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's totally interconnected. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Daniel? Yes, Greg. Can you give me your impression about um, to begin the evening with a kind of vodka? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then to, to finish the evening with a, with a wine? French wine. Start with vodka, yeah. then with wine. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a very reasonable to go about. Yeah, it's, it's a very simple way to go about things, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Because by the time you get to the wine, you're too drunk to be able to judge it properly. In vino veritas. I vino love vino. Veritas.